Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Five Questions With. Last week, we had some amazing guests on the show, and boy, did we deep dive into their worlds. But here's the best part. We also uncovered their fun and playful sides. Our host, Scott Fullerton, has a treat for you today. You see, Five Questions isn't just about serious stuff. We like to keep it light and quirky, too. We ask questions that let our guests show their wonderfully unique and playful sides. Imagine this. What would they do if they woke up as a squirrel one day? Or what's their favorite ice cream flavor that describes their personality? It's all about bringing out their hidden quirks and having a blast along the way. We believe that even the most successful and accomplished individuals have a fun side and we're here to celebrate that. So get ready to witness the fun and playful side of our extraordinary guests. You'll laugh, you'll smile, and you might just discover a thing or two about them that you never knew. So sit back, grab a drink, and get ready for the show. Alrighty, guys, if it's Tuesday, it's time for another five questions with back in studio with me today is the very handsome and talented Mr. Brian J. Smith is here. His new movie, A House is Not a Disco, which he his directorial debut is uh, streaming now if you go to New Fest. And Brian, thanks so much for coming back on Left a Straight Show. How you doing, my friend? Pretty good. And I realize I never told you the meaning of a house is not a disco. So we, we can. Oh, well, we, will, we will put that in here because there's a couple of great right. things. I forgot to all about to ask about your Tony Award. And I'm a huge theater geek. So oh, we, we have things we'll catch up on here. So we, okay. we will get to that for sure. Uh, guys, check out that full interview. The link is below. We had a great talk about all of his, um, Brian's past work and some amazing television series. And this new movie is coming out both behind and in front of the camera. He's got two works coming out. You want to play a little five questions, my friend? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So, like I said, I can't believe I didn't mention the Tony Award for Glass Manager being nominated. Congratulations on that, my friend. What kind of experience was that? That's oh. not the question, but what was that like? Oh, that was that was insane. That was like uh, you're all of a sudden. It was it was very interesting to sort of be like you know for that moment for that like for those couple months. You know, you kind of feel like you're like the toast of the town, you know, you show up on red carpets and like, they know who you are. Um, and the hilarious thing about it is like, literally when they tear down the set of the Tonys, it's like, it, who are you? <laughs> it's, it's like, you are, it is a very humbling experience actually. Cause like the minute you start to think that your shit doesn't stink, uh, or you are just thrust back into like oblivion again. So um, it was a lot That's of fun. Well, <laughs> yeah, I love that. All right. So real question. So being a theater guy, we talked about you training at Juilliard. Do you have any quirky habits or superstitions you do either before on the theater or maybe before a television or movie shoot? Ooh, gosh. I feel like I always try to buy myself something nice when I get a job. Nice. Um, I, I, that, that's something I, I really do stick to actually. I, it's, it's, um, because these things can get very professional, you know, and a little dry and like, okay, it's just the jobs. And sometimes you got to stop and like smell the roses a little bit and take it, take some time before you start getting nervous about, oh my God, am I going to get fired? Or, oh my God, am I, you know, am, am I just going to suck at this? Like to kind of enjoy it and celebrate. And, um, and uh, set yourself up for success <laughs> emotionally. Right, right, yeah, those what it could just should just can get you every time afterwards. So yeah, yeah. Good, to, good to start early. I like that. All right. Well, I'm all about throwing a good dinner party here in the Left of Straight Show. I have foodies on all the time. If you could throw a dinner party, invite any three people, dead or alive, an author, a director, and an actor, who would you like to have dinner with and have a nice little salon? And what would you serve? What's your go-to specialty? Um, okay, I, this is easy for me, actually. So the actor that I would be, invite would be my boyfriend, <laughs> Matt Consalvo, who is the best cook. Uh, I, I, he, I am so lucky. I cannot tell you how incredible a chef this boy is. Um, so... If he was there, I know that we would have an incredible meal because he would cook it and it would just mwah, blow everybody away. Uh, so that's the actor. Uh, a, a, a director? Um, director I, and an author because you're a big book person. Okay. Uh, 
Well, actually, I would say right now the author would be Marcel Proust um, mm-hmm. because I, it just would have been fascinating to see like what he's actually like. Um, I, I love his, you know, remembrance of things past and um, he was like a giant, giant sponge. And so it'd be interesting to have dinner with him and then it, like have him write something about like how he saw you, like a little portrait mm-hmm. and see what he said, because it would probably be pretty revealing and a little embarrassing, but pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then, and then a, a director. Um, uh, oh, living their past. Anyone that you've admired their work? I love Max Opfals. Opfals. Um, he's oh, a. Yeah. He did like La Ronde, and he he was a. Uh, I think I believe he 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 had fled Germany and was making films in France for. A long time but he's known for these like incredibly long takes um like back in the black and white era like when think when the cameras were like the size of a minivan um, <laughs> and it was really 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 difficult to do that so going back and watching those films and seeing those like how he did these and ins- like moving walls so the camera could get in and out of things was just oh like so in- so insane so yeah it would be it would be, be maxwell falls that's some amazing guests. You just had a fourth person to your list. So we talked about the interview. You had to give me Matthew Pfeiffer. You had to give me David Blue. You had to give me Max, an interpreter. Now you have to give me Steve so we can talk about food for an hour. I love it. That's exactly. Even on the show. All right. Question number three. What's maybe the most unusual or unexpected skill you have that most people don't know about? Oh, I play the drums. Nice. Yeah, I took percussion when I was in high school. Uh, it started in middle school, actually, a little, and kept it up a little bit through high school. But um, yeah, I, I I love, especially just playing the snare drum. I mean, I I, I loved, 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 and still do uh, playing playing any kind of percussion instrument. I mean, we the timpani, uh, you know, like a little bit on a drum set, not not that much. It was more kind of like orchestral percussion, but. Yeah, that's that's a it's kind of a, a hidden skill I've got. <laughs> I love that. I remember in the research you were very drawn to the music department at Juilliard, right? You like those kind of classical things. I think that's awesome. Oh really? yeah, yeah, piano, classical piano. Uh, that I, I'm a I'm a classical music uh, nerd, um, and I, I I'm so glad I am because you never get to the bottom of it. it it's it's of just course. so beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, question number four, my friend. We talked about in the interview, you traveled so much for work all over the country and outside the country. Where would your be your dream location to shoot your next film? And where is a dream location for you and Steven to get away for a romantic getaway? Um, honestly, right now it would be just filming in New York. It was the dream because I've never I, very few times I've actually filmed in New York City and I live here and um, it's it's always been a way out somewhere and which is great. It's fantastic to travel. However, to just to work on a film or a series or something like that where I can roll out of bed, go downstairs, get on the subway and go to set or get in, a you know, get picked up and taken to the studio would be oh, that would just be the best. Honestly. Nice. What was the other part of that question? It was uh, where would you and Stephen go on a romantic holiday? Where would you like to go to? Um. Well, we're gonna we are gonna go to San Francisco at the end of June for um, uh, Frameline the uh, Frameline uh, Film Festival out there, and we're gonna spend about a week in San Francisco. So uh, that's gonna be like a little mini vacation for us, and. San Francisco was one of my favorite, favorite, favorite cities. We started Sense8 there. It was the first city that we um, uh, filmed in. Lana Wachowski had a home there. And we I, we spent a lot of incredible evenings at her house, like playing karaoke and and just being stupid. You know, I, I have a lot of incredible memories in San Francisco. So I can't wait to share that with him. That's fantastic. Well, if you can stretch it to July 9th, I told you on the other show about my big gay road trip. I'm spending a month of shows at a resort in Palm Springs. I got two nights at a resort for you in Palm Springs. You got to 
God. It's a little warm, but we're going to have some fun July 9th through August 9th. So there I you do. Have, I have a friend that lives in uh, Palm Springs, too. So I, one of these days, I, I definitely got to get out there. Oh, it's a great city. You have to enjoy it. You don't really want to go in the summer, but that's when uh, when I can get a free hotel room for a month. So that's when I do it. <laughs> Fair. All right. And question number five, my friend. What record in the Guinness Book of World Records do you think you have a shot at conquering? Oh man, uh, I, it would, it would, it would probably. Hmm. Um, oh, that is such a good. That's that's a good question. Um, okay, actually, okay, I, 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 I would, I would say, I, I would be, I, for me travel like how many times like total like traveling in a plane having flown around the world i think that's something maybe not so much these days but there was a, a certain period in my life where i think all of us were like on the verge of like really shattering some kind of like travel record <laughs> like how much right. travel was done in an actual year we were like, so like 13 14 cities you know um oh my was, goodness. yeah we were getting we were probably up there with a the record so yeah there you go. Good answer. Well, Brian Smith, Jay Smith, we made it through five questions. Thanks so much, guys. Remember to see the fantastic full interview down below at the link. Remind everyone, Brian, where they can find the film, A House is Not a Disco. Tell us what the name means and where they can find you on social media. House is Not a Disco, little fun factoid, was um, actually on a poster in the 1970s that uh, uh, some straight residents out there were putting around begging the gay residents to please not play such loud music at night. They were having these really loud, incredible, you know, uh, fabulous house parties. And <laughs> the uh, per person making the poster was like begging them, was like, please, a house is not a disco. Please respect your neighbors. So um, I just kind of lifted that and made it the, the title because I thought it was cute. Um, you can find us at, um, on Instagram at, um, at a house is not a disco and I'm on Instagram personally. I'm at Smith Espis, S M I T H E S P I S. So, um, yeah, say hi, please. Fantastic. I love that factoid. What's the old saying? If it's too loud, you're too old or something like that. I I'll have to watch myself here, but <laughs> totally. Ryan J. Smith, absolute pleasure, my friend. Be sure to check out this new film. Go to New Fest. Check out all their streaming they have available there. If it's Tuesday, it's always five questions right here in the Left to Straight Show. We will see you next week. Stay tuned. We have Left to Straight Show interviews over the next two days and I'll standing on my soapbox this Friday. We'll talk to you next time, everyone. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to our bonus podcast, Five Questions with. Be sure to look for us every Tuesday as we bring back some of your favorite guests from the previous week's interviews and some special best of five questions guests as well. If you haven't subscribed yet or hit the like button, tap those buttons now to help other people find Left of Straight podcasts. We appreciate you for listening and look for our interviews with your favorite LGBTQ and straight allies from entertainment, foodies, music, books, and advocacy. We'll see you next week because if it's Tuesday, it's time for five questions with.